I was listening to a podcast by Stephen Barlett, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he'll get people messaging him daily asking for mentoring or helping or do you have a job going, blah, blah, blah. Now, if you send him a message saying, you know, hey, have you got a job going, question mark, come on. Well, are you the right person I should hire if that's the way you're going to be messaging prospects? No. How do you go above and beyond? How do you stand out? How do you show that you're not just another employee? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, very important. Here's, you know? here's the other thing as well I realized, you know, trying to get in touch with the key decision makers yeah. or, you know, the key person or specific, whether it's an investor or whether it's a, you know, a potential client, a prospect that you're trying to achieve. They all have these sort of traditional channels that yeah. everyone goes through, like you mentioned. Say, oh, the VC would have a form on, fill out on their website and they get thousands of them. Yeah. And how many do you reckon they open? Probably yeah. almost no. zero. They probably yeah. don't even look at them. But that's one way to go about it, right? And that's where all the traffic is. Correct. One of the other ways that's I've found to be the most effective is just warm introductions. Yeah. If you can get a warm introduction from someone straight to the top, 100%. say, hey, meet the one of the partners, one yeah. of the, you know, one of the LPs or whatever it may be, and you get a, you know, an introduction straight to the top, yeah. that changes everything. Yeah. And the reason for that is from these thousand uh, applications they're getting daily. They don't know you from a bar of soap, mm-hmm. right? No pun intended. But um, yeah. <laughs> but um, that was good. Yeah, but um, do you work for us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but the reality is, as soon as you get a warm introduction, they're like, okay, I trust Bishara. Yeah. He introduces Michael to me, so I know Bishara's judgment, and tick. I know Tick. So he's vetted, and Bishara's like our relationship is obviously a big factor. And he's yeah. like, I'm not going to introduce someone to Farouk that yeah. I don't trust that I haven't vetted. Yeah. So that makes a massive difference Huge. and automatically the conversation is a lot more comfortable yeah. you know you have common ground or how do you know bishara and then yeah. it's, it's a different conversation as opposed to can you please yeah. talk to me kind of thing yeah that's a key takeaway <laughs> i'd say is um don't be afraid to drop names mm. if you know someone you know it's like there's a very big public figure on the afr who i met with and i dropped his name to someone else you know, because we were having a conversation over coffee. Now, this guy doesn't meet with anyone, right? I was lucky enough to get an hour of his time. We caught up. He runs a big VC fund. Sent a message to someone else, a prospect, demonstrating them with him. Dropped his name. He said hello. Bang. He comes back to you straight away. So don't be afraid to drop yeah, names. Definitely. I think it's very important to build credibility. 100%. And the reality yeah. is when you do drop a name, the person you're speaking to is going to speak to that name that you dropped. Right. And they'll be like, hey, I just met with Michael. Just Amazing. Met with what are your thoughts? They're yeah. pitching me this idea. And there's going yeah. to be some sort of validation from yeah. there. 100%. So, you know, I think, I think absolutely, you're both absolutely right. Yeah. Warm introductions is the best way to cut through the crap, right? Mm-hmm. Get through yeah. all the noise of all the other people that, yeah. you know, you just blurred out with everyone else, right? But yeah. I think I'd like to explore the strategies on how to actually increase your network, sure. right? You mentioned you mentioned going to conferences. Yeah. That's a great way for you to expose yourself to people in the industry. Yeah. LinkedIn, yeah. you know, great way for you to reach out to people. What are some other strategies you'd recommend, Michael, for, for people that don't have a network? Because, you know, yeah. the overwhelming majority of people are going to say, yeah. well, fuck, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know anyone to call sure. that can introduce me to X, To make that intro yeah. in the first place. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, how, sure. do you, how do you get over that initial hump, which is, I yeah. don't know anyone? Yeah, sure. So I think first thing first, it's important that you recognize what you would like to do or which, where you'd like to be, which industry. So narrow it down to a niche, number one. Let's say your niche is, I want to know everyone, the biggest people in AI tech. Mm -hmm. Cool? Great. What's happening in AI tech at the moment? Cool. Sam Sam Altman has got a Startup Vic um, event coming up. Cool. I'm going to pay $80 to go to that. Go to that 2,000 people in the room in your niche that are interested in the same thing you're interested in. Mm. Cool. Everything is available for you online. So if you cannot research online, that's your problem. Yeah, there's no excuse is what you're saying. No excuse. All right. So that's one way. Mm. Um, Other way is asking people that you do know whether they know or whether they have ideas on how to open doors Mm. or, you know, what I'm saying is there is so much reach out there these days that there's no reason you can't reach anyone. Mm. So LinkedIn obviously is fantastic. Social media is also great depending on the target demographic that you're going after or the people you're trying to reach. If you're trying to reach a VC, it might not necessarily be the right approach to go through Instagram, but it's the right approach through LinkedIn or email or phone number or whatever it might be. Mm. All right. Um, if you can't get a phone number, great tool. Uh, Lusha, Lusha, Lusha. Don't know what is it? Pronounce. L U S H A. Download it. It's great. What does it do? It's a it's a Chrome extension on your LinkedIn. 
it's a pop-up and it gives you that person's phone number and email address oh, yeah, nice. LinkedIn. Oh, really? Okay. Um, for free? Well, the open rate, yeah, for free. The open rate on uh, text messages, I think is above 80 to 90%. Yeah. Open rate on emails sits at what, under 5% probably. So they scrape the internet to find a person's Correct. phone numbers and give it to you. Oh, wow. All right. That's, that's a good So insight. there's tools out yeah. there, guys. That's you look at tools, you know, explore things. Mm. You're not sure what tools to use? Cool. Who's done it really well recently? Who's been using the most innovative AI tools, for example, and I want to know what they are? Oh, what tools are you using for this? Because you've seemed to be doing it well. There's no way you can launch a podcast in a month, but you've done it. How did you do it? What, what tools have you used to be able to do that? Mm. So you're constantly learning. I don't care how much you know. That's the one takeaway is you're constantly learning, mm. right? So there's always going to be something you don't know. And I think that's a very dangerous game to play yeah. is like not knowing what you don't know and, um, you know, making perceptions or thinking about going, okay, I think I know this. And guessing that you know it when and then don't. going punting in. I always say it's not the deal that you do that makes you. Sorry, it's not the de- deal that you do that makes you. It's the deals that you don't do that don't break you. Mm. Okay? So be very careful around the approach you take around that, mm. you know? And so I think just networking is a big one, obviously, takeaway. And utilizing social media tools, etc., events, conferences, um, you know, there's lists of things. Webinars, well. etc. Oh, mm. webinars. Um, yeah, you've got that many people around the world that you can access. So, Michael, you seem to be a guy that's a really big thinker, which is incredible. And yeah. I think that's re- the reason why OpenPay grew the way it did, right? Uh, you were a pivotal part of that. But, um, you know, if someone came to me for advice on how to build their startup, yeah. I would not tell them to reach out to Bupa. Yeah. I would not tell them to reach out to Medibank. Yeah. I'd say... Start small, yeah. And I, I think agree. I think there's a negative side to that, which yeah. is you're not thinking big. Yeah. You know, ex- why not? Why yeah. not take advantage or at least give it a shot? Yeah. So, what's your advice on you know focusing on the small companies versus sure. taking that big swing hit on that massive sure. brand? Sure, that's a very good question. So, um, one advice I'd say is I see way too many people out there spending way too much time and too much money unnecessarily. Mm. Okay, so. For example, let's talk about the little things, right? Launching a website. Like it should not take you a month to launch a website and it should not cost you 15 grand to do it. Mm. And if someone's quoting you 15 grand, you shouldn't be doing it. It better have all the bells and whistles. Correct. Yeah. You're better off launching a site in three days that costs you $500 and is crap mm-hmm. than not delaying the process for two months and then hoping that you launch successfully. Don't get the product perfect. So... In tech, as you know, in in general, you've always got an MVP, Mm. minimal viable product. Now, as you know, to develop a tech platform, there's a few options you can go through. Um, For example, you want to build an app, right? You can go and spend, let's say your development team will cost you, to develop an app, let's say $252 million, Mm -hmm. right? A basic app. You can go invest that money on your own and build it and spend six months to 12 months building it. Um, Or you can get investor money because investors will back you on your idea once you've proven you're solving a really big problem, Mm -hmm. right? To de-risk yourself as long as you've got conviction. Or you can bring a business partner or CTO in exchange for equity. Correct. So what that would mean is, okay, you own 100% of nothing at the moment, right? Which is an idea that you've got brewing. Why don't you bring someone technical because you don't have that capability, for example, Give them 25% of a business that's theoretically not worth anything at the moment, Mm -hmm. but they build your product that might cost you half a million dollars to build for nothing, okay, over the next three months Mm. because they're fully committed to the venture Mm. because they've got skin in the game. That's a cheap way of doing it. Sure. Right? Now there's low code thing. You know, there's so many tools out there that you can build products a lot faster, a lot cheaper, right? Um, But one advice I would give is also when you're starting out, Fall in love with the problem, not the solution. Mm. So, you know, when you're thinking about what you're bringing to market, why are you bringing it? Is it because it's solving a problem for you, for someone else? Or is it because you just have a bright idea that um, you think is going to work, Mm -hmm. right? Because you and I, I'm sure, or any business person out there has got thousands of ideas every day, Mm -hmm. but they mean nothing, right? 
unless you, number one, are at the right time, number two, are with the right people, and number three, are solving a very big problem that touches a lot of people. Mm. So you need to fall in love with that problem because if you don't fall in love with that problem, you're going to crack, whether it means it's an, a year down the track or six months down the track. So if you're starting out, I would do it in the cheapest, most efficient way possible. And that's the advice I give everyone. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that short clip from the podcast, feel free to watch more of them by clicking here. And if you want the full podcast, click here.